All right, what's up, guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week. It was quite an interesting one. We have been totally doing the opposite of sell in May and go away, which I thought was interesting because usually May is a very bearish month. At least it's slow, volume slows down, it can get a little choppy. But usually we like to see some downside during May and especially June as well. Summer trading does get a little bit risk off usually, but this time we were seeing the total opposite of that. If you tuned in last week, we were looking for a majority to the short side. We're gonna have a lot of put trades and Monday they, they did work out. So they did do pretty good if you were scalping. Tesla dumped and Amazon dumped and a, a couple others did okay. But then after Monday, Tuesday to Friday, markets totally picked up and it was full risk on mode. So a lot of, a lot of those stocks did break out. So it didn't work out the way I, I wanted it to, unless you were really just day trading. For swing traders though, you know, we do have to wait for that signal on the indexes maybe before taking put setups for swing trades. That's kind of gonna kind of be the mindset again this week. Just kind of wait for the indexes to pull back, hopefully get validation on the individual tickers, and then we can start looking at put setups. But anyway, so we'll go into the economic calendar here. We're looking at Monday, May 22nd. We do have a couple of Fed speakers. We got Fed Bullard speaking. Fed Barkin and Fed Bostick. So we got three Fed speakers. So that could create some volatility in the markets. I feel like Fed speakers last week were pretty much a nothing burger. A lot of them spoke and it really didn't do anything. Jerome Powell did speak on Friday with Ben Bernanke and that brought a little bit of volatility to the market, but otherwise it was relatively slow. And lately they've kind of just been reiterating the same thing over and over and the market's already priced that in. So if we don't have the surprise factor, Fed speakers are not really gonna do much. And then Tuesday, May 23rd here, we do have another Fed Logan speech. And then most importantly, we have the S&P Global Composite PMI flash. We got PMIs, that's a good little economic indicator and it can definitely move the market. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then we also have the real estate market data. We got new home sales month over month and new home sales as well. Wednesday, arguably the most important aside from Friday, we do have the FOMC minutes so this will be pretty much the FOMC meeting last time, but in black and white. So it'll essentially have some of the things that they told us in the press conference in the last FOMC meeting. This time it's just going to be pretty much written down. And a lot of times algorithms will start to kind of comb through it and find something that's a little bit different than maybe we heard at the press conference or at the meeting the last time. So this can definitely be a market mover, but it really just depends. It, it can also be a nothing burger too, though if it's just reiterating the same thing we already know. So if there's no surprise factor in the FOMC minutes, it, it may, you know, may not move the market that much. And also at the same time, if there's not too much change, that could also be a little bit bullish for the markets because they're not expecting, you know, hawkish tone inside the FOMC minutes. So that'll be an interesting one. I feel like I just did a video on the FOMC minutes not too long ago, or at least in the economic calendar, FOMC minutes were coming up. So it just shows you how fast time is flying by. And Thursday, May 25th, we do have the regular initial jobless claims. We got Chicago Fed National Activity Index. And then we also have the GDP data. So this will probably be a pretty important. I'll definitely be keeping an eye on that. That could definitely move the market. And then also we do have pending home sales year over year and pending home sales month over month. And then affect Colin's speech. So more real estate data. Arguably people are starting to kind of look for a top out in the real estate market and that can definitely kind of hint if we're going to a recession or not. And the real estate market is pretty important to keep an eye on and it can play a role in how stocks move. And then Friday, probably the most second important aside from the FOMC minutes, it's probably could even be the most important. We get the PCE price index. So this is actually the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. They prefer this over the CPI. It just has better data for them to reflect whether inflation is coming down or not. And also there's personal spending and then personal income both month over month. So this will definitely move the market somewhat. Uh, it really just depends if they, like I said, if there's a surprise factor or not. And you know, if there's really inside signs of inflation sticking or coming down, we're definitely gonna be looking for that. Oh, and then I, I missed this. So we got durable goods orders as well. So this is a nice little data dump here on Friday. So definitely be careful with that. Realize that this could be a little bit of event risk. So, I mean, swinging stuff overnight into stuff like this, I mean, it's pretty much a coin toss. So you might want to have like time on contracts swinging into anything like this. And then as well, we do have the Michigan Consumer Sentiment, which comes after the bell 
ranks for the open so that'll be interesting so we got a lot of data coming up and the, the friday can definitely be a market mover so i'll probably be the most excited for friday in terms of catching market volatility and next we're going into the setups here so i do have five this week i was struggling to find some and then i actually combed back through my list and i found a couple interesting ones that i feel like are looking a little bit overextended and at the same time i did want to have maybe a potential long setup and i found a decent one on xle for energy so we'll go into that later but for now let's go ahead and get into pltr here so this has pretty much been an ai hype play you can see it's starting to get a little bit overextended starting to pull into this major supply zone from 2022 this is actually all the way from back in april of 2022 as well as we do have a major resistance here so it did break out of that and that did bring some volume we would need it to get under 1162 for more downside and that's coming from this point right here so if we can get under that 1162 this is a great buy imbalance candle that could eventually fill back up maybe at least like 50 percent of it i'm not saying that the whole buy imbalance candle is just going to fill down directly it could take a couple days it could take a week and also i mean it could bounce halfway it's kind of like a like like a gap fill like when you see gaps fill sometimes they'll stop halfway and reverse so that's just kind of how it is can't really expect you know just to plow through this candle in one day so that's all i meant by that but anyways we'll go ahead and set an alert we're gonna look for it to get under 1162 if it gets under 1162 that means it's getting back under major resistance that could invite sellers algorithms and show that price is trying to reverse back to the downside so like most ai stocks obviously palantir is a pretty volatile stock the implied volatility might be a little bit high so i mean if you're day trading this you know, short-term contracts may seem a little bit expensive just because, I mean, the implied volatility is so high, it just gasses up the premiums. That can make it not as intriguing, but either way, I really like this. If you get under 1162, you know, that's a pretty good short reversal signal and it could fill up this buy imbalance candle. And then really, there's only a support at this 1031, which is previous resistance it topped out here, also topped out here. It hasn't even back tested that level yet, so I would imagine that it might come back down eventually and try to back test this level and hold up there but we'll have to see this is a pretty big breakout and with the ai hype people are just you know buying like monkeys monkey see monkey do and they'll go ahead and just pile in pretty much just fomo and i'm not a fan of fomo and i usually look for the contrarian side of that kind of stuff because if you're a short-term trader and it gets too overextended i mean what goes up must come down eventually you just have to be kind of quick and you do have to be careful not to get caught in it as well and you just have to make sure you're getting at the right spot definitely don't want to be you know shorting the first day it breaks out you usually want to wait for like a reversal candle a nice like red candle showing that it's reacting to resistance reacting to supply etc and that gives you good confirmation of maybe seeing some downside so palantir looking at puts wait for it to get under 1162 that might be a good reversal signal and that could also fill up this big buy imbalance to the downside so next we're going to soxl this is actually a semiconductor play it's a pretty much a leveraged etf so it's a little bit more volatile and it's going to move more than like your standard you know smh smh is another semiconductor etf it's has a relatively low volatility it's definitely not moving the same as soxl here but it's going to move similar to smh as well and just the overall chip sector but for soxl here you can see there's a major supply here this is all the way from august 2022 this is a really big supply zone that led to a huge sale imbalance to the downside you can see it's had trouble here a couple times you got a rejection here got a rejection here and then you kind of got a little candle friday it's obviously not the greatest rejection candle so i would say if you wanted to wait for it to get up to 1840 you can do that if it gets around that area a little bit closer you start looking for a rejection to the downside we'll set an alert put resistance because that could be a better point to wait as well but if monday it does start kind of getting under friday's low and flushing that could be a good reversal signal as well and maybe you wouldn't have to wait for that 1840 but like i said for any shorts that are kind of like you know moving similar to nasdaq and spy you might want to wait for that reversal signal on the qqq and the spy for taking those something like pelletier is a high beta name it's not going to move with the spy really as much it just kind of has a mind of its own so you really don't have to like look for pullbacks in the indexes for these kind of names but for soxl and stuff that's like following the chip sector chips make up a big section of the of the nasdaq so you do want to see that pullback in the nasdaq 
to get that pull back in the SOXL. But either way here for SOXL, pulling into this major supply, so we're actually already inside the supply, but then there's also just that major resistance at 1840. If you want to wait for it to get a little bit closer, that might be a better spot, but either way, this is tapping supply, so this could start rejecting pretty soon and making trying to make a triple top. And then obviously your risk off is just gonna be, you know, above 1840 in the short term and then like a major risk off for you know swing trades if your inputs is you know they're going to be over 1940 or so and that's that supply zone high we got over that supply zone high obviously it, it could go higher so you do want to make sure you, you know you're looking at those risk off levels make sure you're not you know just bag holding puts so looking pretty good here like I said, if you want to just mark that 1840 level, set an alert at 1840, wait for it to get up there, look for put scalps. That's probably all I'm going to be doing all week, just looking at put scalps. And then, you know, for swing trades and puts, you're probably going to want to wait for those signals on the indexes. So SOX out here, looking at puts. And next, we're going into Apple. So this is actually hitting a major resistance. This is a resistance all the way from August of 2022, where it topped out at 176.15. You can see it's still holding this uptrend very cleanly though. So it is important if you're trying to get like a swing trade for puts on this, it might be wise to wait for the trend line to break. But if you're looking at scalps and you're looking for rejections off resistance, this is a pretty good spot to start looking at day trades on puts. Obviously you might want to see that spike in volatility and see a little bit more from the market. And it might be wise to wait for the indexes also to, to pull back as well. But this resistance is just so major and it looks so good here. I feel like this could start pulling back into the downtrend line. It might take, you know, the data sets to do that. It might take the FOMC minutes or, you know, the PCE to start doing that. But I feel like it might try to come back down and at least test the uptrend line. Now for another trade, we can go ahead and set an alert on this and we'll just name it breakdown. So this uptrend goes from this point up to this little point right here. If it gets under that, that's a major trend change and it could flush you know further to the downside but right now the focus is that 176.15 and it's rejecting pretty hard i mean it rejected pretty nicely on friday if we go down to the 15 minute friday was very choppy as an opex day so really didn't do much but you can see really struggled at 176.15 naturally so if we can see some follow through on that looks pretty great risk to reward looks great obviously i mean i'm not buying calls up here that's just stupid and you know sometimes the stock market can be stupid and it could keep going up but I mean, risk to reward wise, this is this is starting to look like an area to, you know, at least, you know, for institutions and Wall Street to start taking profits and unloading supply at this major resistance, because why not? But in terms of the uptrend line, like I said, still holding structure. So you would definitely need to be out before, you know, it got down to this trend line. If you wanted to re-enter, you need to wait for it to get under the trend line. Simple as that. But this major resistance looking really good here. So Apple, I'm gonna go ahead and look at puts on this this week. All right, and for the last short setup here, looking at puts on this as well, this is Google, but this one's gonna need a little bit of confirmation. So you see, we do have this 122.41. You got a rejection here, and you got a major rejection here. So you can see it did break over it very briefly, but it also closed over it slightly. So what I wanted to do, we're gonna right click, add alert, and we'll just put resistance. So if it gets back under 122.41, that's back under resistance. There's a big buy imbalance here. It could probably start, try to start filling back up to the downside. But you will need that break under 122.41. It's really important. So make sure you set that alert and wait for that. Otherwise, Google here just looking ridiculous. I mean, it's kind of just, I mean, the whole NASDAQ looks pretty ridiculous. NASDAQ hit all my targets to the upside that I was looking for. So I'm really not sure what I'm looking for at this point. We'll have to go into the QQQ here in a little bit and maybe I'll see something. But right now for Google, just wait for that 122.41. Wait for it to get back under. That'd be a good signal. You want to see it, you know, breaking under that on the shorter term time frames, maybe like a 15 to 30 to one hour candle. And that's a good signal. And it could start filling back up to the downside. But right now, as long as it's holding over 122.41, this previous resistance can act as support. So it could try to make, you know, a little base right here off 122.41 and kind of just chop around there. Pretty much like a classic break, retest, go higher. But this candle is pretty ugly, so I mean, it's got a very heavy top wick. Pretty much a relatively flat close, but at the same time, it's still holding to 122.41. So you do want to see it get under that. Maybe get under Friday's low as well. Under Friday's low, it's probably going to be like, you know, 122.20 or so. So if you really wanted to, if you really wanted to wait for it to get under 122 flat, that's a pretty good psychological level if it gets under that probably start seeing some flushing to the downside. But either way, I hope you guys can see it. I mean, even on Apple, you saw that major resistance. It's very, very, very major. I mean, it's a, it was a huge resistance area. This one's pretty huge as well. So I hope you guys can see the idea of why 
this would be a good short because last week kind of got me looking a little crazy because I was looking at shorts last week and on a lot of stocks blasted off to the upside so there's only like a day or two of pullback and then we just went completely risk on but i still feeling a little bit like the market's a little frothy up here but we'll google here looking at puts just wait for it to get under 122.40 and that's your confirmation and next we're going to xle so this is actually the only long setup that i really liked out of my list of 225 tickers that i go through every sunday this is the only long that i found that i actually kind of liked and that's because this is a bullish wedge breakout you can see it might be just a tad bit late but either way it's still kind of early of the breakout usually i'm looking to enter after a candle like this and it kind of did gap up a little bit after that but only closed that 077 percent so it's not like super overextended or anything your major resistance point is going to be at 8175 so that general 81 area might be a good area for it to head up to but this wedge is pretty nice a little bit short term might want to see a little bit more volume pick up and a little bit more rotation into energy because it's just been all about tech lately but either way spy qqq both closed like relatively red not huge and then exily closing up 0.77 to the upside that's showing relative strength maybe it's showing a little early rotation into energy obviously just one day of relative strength is not that much we'll need to see a little bit more follow through but this looks pretty good and this might make like more of like a like a better swing trade buy time on it let it work out because i mean this kind of has been a little bit of a choppy area but either way if this gets over 80 i feel like this could shoot up pretty nicely so exit here i'm looking at calls maybe not so much for day trading uh, for day trading obviously i'm looking to enter a little bit earlier on these kind of breakouts so just because it's already popped out pretty decently probably like go with a swing trade just because after a breakout like this it can you know pull back before heading up so i'm not sure this is the best spot for a day trade but either way looking pretty good it looks better than other longs to the upside in terms of risk to reward and also in terms of their patterns as well i mean i just couldn't find another pattern like this or anything that didn't just look overblown to the upside. And you know, in this kind of market, you wanna add on dips. Uh, breakouts are sh so short lived. It's really hard to buy a breakout on the higher time frames in this kind of market. If I showed you a, a chart of SPY on the, on the one day chart, every breakout, you know, that pretty much went up for maybe one or two days and then it, it just pulled right back ever since 2022 and they started raising rates. So it makes it a little bit risky and that can make these little bottom picks look a little bit more attractive because you're getting at a discount and you know you can just sell it once it gets to a, a resistance but you don't have to be in them for long and they do get bid up pretty fast because they're cheap and they have a decent pattern like this which is a falling wedge so this is a bullish pattern so exily here looking at calls might look better for a swing trade it could need a few days exily can be a little bit choppy unless it gets you know pretty crazy volume you start seeing crude oil you know rip to the upside so we need to see a little bit more from crude oil as well and this could rip up to 81.75 and next we're going into spy and i kind of just want to touch on what i was talking about in the last clip here about breakouts since 2022 being relatively short term you can see the spy broke out right here only lasted three days before selling off you got a small breakout right here at 410 once i got over 410 shot back down and you can see it's trying to get over that 418 31 which is this resistance here but either way i mean it's, it's still kind of struggling to break out it's not like a we don't have like that clear bullish momentum really yet I'm suggesting high volume to the upside and fomo starting to kick in it's still kind of within resistance here so there's a resist resistance point here all the way from august and then there's one right here and that's that 418.31 and then 419.96 we could just round that up to 420. so spy this week it will have to get over 420. i would like to see it get over 420 and close and that could take it higher Otherwise, as long as it's staying under 420 and, you know, around this 418.31, I feel like this can act as resistance. You guys know me. I'm either looking for it to make support, make a base, then go higher. And, you know, you buy on the previous resistance acting as support or you wait for it to get down to demand and you buy down there. But buying at resistance, just not for me. And, you know, that might make me miss moves sometimes, but I'm not chasing up here. I just refuse to do it. That might kind of leave me left out a little bit, but I'm willing to do that just because it's not the best risk to reward and you do want that confirmation your confirmation is going to be over 420 a base off 420 then you can march higher or you can wait for it to get down to demand like i just showed you and buy around 412 411 and that's a pretty good demand zone from when we broke out this week and to touch on the breakout from the week you had to go down to the uh the smaller time frames so this breakout was essentially kind of like a little like wedge formation and you can see on the hourly once it got out i mean it's a pretty good setup 
and you pretty much just had to take profit once it got up to 418.31. It did break over that briefly, but it was smart to just go ahead and take profit once it got there. Just because you got a major resistance here, and then you got a major resistance over here. So it was just smart to take profit at that area. And you know, it could go higher. I mean, it's it's looking pretty decent here. We're trading over all the moving averages, especially the one hour 200 SMA. So it, it was a pretty good setup. It was holding a base and it also broke out. So you did have to zoom out a little bit, but the setup was pretty nice. So now that you see that little wedge, you can see sometimes you do have to go to different time frames. Obviously in my videos, I'm only looking at the one day mostly because it does have the most major levels and it pretty much just scales my chart to find these levels from the past. So I think it's important that you use the one week and the one day, but you can go down to the hourlies to find setups like that. Like that little wedge and consolidation area is a great setup once it broke out. And you'll find those all the time. Once it finally gets out of the chop, I mean, that does pay, so. But like I said, for SPY here, do you need to get over 420? Do you wanna see it making a base off, you know, 419s to 420? Make a base as new support, and then it can march higher. Otherwise, wait for it to pull back, wait for it to get in demand, then you can look at longs down there. In terms of shorts, we really don't have a confirmation of a nice rejection yet. I mean, we got a small rejection here from Friday, but only closed down, you know, 0.15. So we do need to see a little bit more. And maybe that signal would be under this peak right here at 1762. So if we got under 1762, you got a big buy imbalance here from when it broke out and that could take you back down to demand. So if it gets under 1762, that's a pretty good level. We could even mark that, we'll add an alert and we'll just put that it's breaking back down. So we got that alert set. Otherwise, I mean, this could just make a base and try to go higher, but we do need to see evidence of that. And you know, that would be like a one day candle closing over 420 and, or even multiple candles just holding that area. Otherwise, it's kind of like an inflection point. You're either gonna be waiting for it to get under 14, 417.62, or you're gonna be waiting for it to get over 420 and making a base. Or if you're patient, like I said, wait for it to get down to demand. So that's for the SPY, probably gonna be waiting again and just be patient. And next we're going into QQQ. So over 321.50s, I had us going up to the 330s and we can see we exceeded that. We didn't even reject supply at all. So we didn't reject this supply and we didn't reject this supply either, which is totally against what I thought. I thought we would see some resistance here. So I was wrong on that end and we did close over 334.42. Another thing I was looking for was for it to kind of slowly get up here and eventually, you know, be able to hit the targets. Uh, I didn't want us to get up too high too fast because that's when you can start seeing a reversal but even though we went up a little bit too high too fast here we are over the 334.42 so as long as that's holding we're going to get rid of these supply zones since they're void so as long as this 334.42 is holding i feel like it could make a base so it's making you know support off previous resistance just a classic break and retest so it absolutely has to hold that so tech absolutely has to hold this level if it reclaims back under that's a clear sign that can invite sellers back down you're gonna fill the sell or the buy imbalance right back up and it probably head down to this little demand zone right here that's gonna be at 326.74 it's a little rally base rally zone the most recent one so if it goes back under 334.42 it's important you either look for a close under that and that would signal a reversal more than likely if we're still holding 334.42 and it's holding multiple days and it's consolidating above this level or at this level it's likely going to make a base and try to go higher so it's important that this level either holds the support or if you're bearish it's important that it goes under this so that 334.42 is your level of focus this week I don't have any other level, to be honest, nothing here. So we already exceeded my, you know, 321.50 breakout targets, which is the 330s. It, it went way higher than I thought, to be honest, and it didn't see any resistance. So now you're just gonna be focusing on that 334.42. And that's really the only level of focus I got. All right, and if we go down to the one week chart, so this is a longer term chart, and we got some Fibonacci retracements from this high down to this low, so this is all-time highs down to most recent lows. We really have no resistance until we get to the 61.8 level, and that's gonna be at 349.71. So the 61.8 point, or the 61 .8 level is usually the most major resistance when it comes to Fibonacci retracements. It always has the hardest rejection or the hardest bounce, depending if you're doing a down measure or if you're doing an up measure. In an up measure, you're obviously looking for bounces off the 61.8. In a down measure like this, when the markets have been trending down, you're usually looking for a rejection off that level. So maximum, I can put us for QQQ, 
over time. So this might take a couple weeks or maybe even a month or so. But eventually I feel like the 61.8 will hit. And that's because, I mean, it just usually does. And then it, it'll have that major rejection off the 61.8, AKA it's called the golden zone. So that's another name for the 61.8 is the golden zone. And you can see, I mean, it, it, it did clear over the 50% retracement that it rejected off prior. So it cleared over that and also closed over 334.42 on the one week. And that's just, that's the peak of that same candle. So it's important that, you know, if you're bearish, you want to see it get back under 330s for sure. Maybe even get under that 334.42 precisely. If it can get under that close, that could take you down. Also, if you could get under the 50% retracement that we were just looking at at 331.50, that's also a good zone for a potential reversal as well. Otherwise, really nothing in the way. I could just make a base here. Just make sure you keep that 334.42 level of focus in. Wait for it to go under if you're going to go short. Also, wait for more evidence of a base being made if you want to go long. I just these breakouts just don't last long lately and you kind of saw that in the example I was showing you on spy there's a couple where they just lasted you know two three days and you know they sell right back off so I need to see a little bit more evidence of this being a clean breakout and you could maybe look to the long side I personally would wait for that 334 42 to get made and then it could maybe march higher that's for the qqq just keep that level of focus in make sure it's holding or if you want to go short wait for it to get under and next we're going into iwm so finally this thing broke out so we've been focused on this trend line for weeks and it just kept rejecting uh, it wasn't going anywhere it kept going back down to 170s you know 168s and bouncing from there i pretty much mentioned if you want to take this long you want to wait for this to break out so we did get a little two-day breakout and then look where we ran into the 179.26 level that we've been covering for weeks and pretty much rejected off that general area. So I said, if this broke out, this would most likely be your price target. And that's exactly what happened. So it's nice to see that technical analysis is still somewhat working, even though stocks are defying logic a little bit to the upside. We broke out really nice run up hard rejection off 179.26 area so now that it's broken out i really feel like you can't be too bearish here yet but in order to be bullish i do need to see it getting over that 179.26 so that's the next signal i would be looking for now that it's broken out of this line and honestly i wouldn't want to take puts at 179.26 or this area because it's broken out you got the kdj going up the only thing that's kind of going against this is that it's still trending under the 200 sma so the 200 sma is kind of your longer term moving average and it's still trending under that so that could be a reason why the shorts keep getting re-invited to the party so we'll probably need to clear over that and also that 179.26 and that could take it higher and also you need to see more of a bid in the banks and the financial sector that could bring it up as well they've been kind of having a shit year so we will need to see more upside from the regional banks the regular you know huge banks you know the commercial banks wells fargo jpm etc but once they come up you know they can bring up the regionals a little bit but iwm is pretty much it, it kind of moves like directly with the banks and like xlf and other bank names so you do need to see a little bit more from that otherwise just wait for it to get over that 179.26 We'd even add an alert and we'll name a breakout. So that'd be your short term breakout. And then also you need to wait for it to get over 200 SMA as well. And that'd be your next signal. Since, you know, this breakout already happened, I really don't like a trade here at all because yeah, 179.26 is resistance. So you don't want to buy calls directly at that. And at the same time, it already broke out. Yeah, we will need to wait for that 179.26 and that'll be your, your long setup. And like I said, I don't like puts here because it already broke out. So. Even though you do have that strong resistance, I'd rather just wait for it to get over the resistance and that'd be a, a great setup to the upside. That's for IWM, just waiting for that 179.26 breakout, looking for upside over that. All right, next we're going to the DXY. So the US dollar here, we've been focused on this level of support and I've pretty much been calling for a DXY bounce eventually, as long as the support is holding. We finally got that, but we got minimum pullback in the equity market. So I really thought that this DXY signal would start kind of bringing the markets back down a little bit and it didn't do that at all. So that's interesting. Markets have been going up despite dollar going up and that's kind of threw me off a little bit to be honest. Um, so we may need to see a little bit more from the dollar before we start seeing downside because the market's just not reacting to it. And it's kind of just been inversing the bonds. So the bonds have been selling off, the TLT has been selling off and stocks have actually been going up. So that could be a good sign that, you know, bonds are back to their inverse correlation with equities. But either way, I still don't like buying calls or like going long when the dollar is moving up like this. It just doesn't make sense to me. And it's not something I've been doing at all lately, especially if you're, if you're trading that in 2022, if you're going long when the dollar was trending up like this, you would get screwed. So 
it's important that you know you do pay attention to these deals because eventually they do matter and they will come back into play and likewise if the dollar starts selling off heavy you know this may, that might be a good area to start looking at you know longs again but i really do like this I like to see the dollar and equities have that inverse correlation as another piece of a signal, especially when I'm day trading. You know, I'm not going to take calls when the dollar's closing up 0.64%. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now I'm probably looking to short the rips and looking for a reversal at that point, just because, I mean, a rising US dollar is just not good for equities. And it's always been like that. So for the dollar this week, uh, it pretty much hit my target. So I was looking for 103 to hit. It did exceed that and got over that a little bit. Now back testing that, probably shared this a million times, but the 103 price target just came from this COVID peak here from 2020. So now I will need to see it making a base off 103 and also maybe another one week candle close over 103 and that could take you up to 105.63 next and that's going to come from this little top out area right here and that could bring the market lower so but if it falls back under 103 for a couple days and it has multiple closes under 103 probably look for the dollar to fall back down and you can see if we drew a trend line from this peak to this peak right here it even broke out right there so this is kind of like what is that from 2022 to current so this is a decent downtrend line that finally got broke out of and that was a great signal for the dollar to go up uh, it just didn't bring down the markets as long as it's holding over 103 here i feel like there's still a chance that the elevated dollar could start spooking people i feel like it's really going to depend on the fomc minutes as long as the fomc minutes you know come in line i really wouldn't expect much from them but if there's something new written as you know written in black and white that we had no idea about from the last meeting then that could definitely move the market so we're just gonna be keeping an eye on that and also the pce data that's definitely gonna move currencies so just keep that 103 level in focus if it's holding over that could take the dollar a little bit higher but if it starts falling back under and you see one or two closes under 103 that obviously probably bring it back down to support down you know the early 100s so as for the dxy might just need a little bit more data and next we're going into the vix so vix has just been a nothing burger the past couple of weeks it really hasn't done anything volatility is i mean this is like historic lows i mean that's what it feels like at least it's just it's the lowest point volatility has been in a couple of years so it's been really tough to use this as a signal unless you're using it kind of intraday and you're looking for those quick spikes to go short or if you're looking for those fast drops and heavy you know sell-offs in the vix to go long in terms of the higher time frames that we look at you really haven't had anything so the only thing that we've seen is that the 1553 to 16 area is holding so this area has been pretty resilient and as long as it's holding over that i feel like the vix can definitely pop back up and another level of focus we had was the 1811 and i was looking for a close over that to take it over to 20s you can see it, it refused to do that so last week that was our Pretty much our short term signal, we're looking for a close over 1811 to take you up to 20. And it just was not able to do that. So I hope you can see why the 1811 level was the area of focus. It's going to be the same thing this week. We want to see that close over 1811. If it gets the close over, then I could, you know, march up to 20. And for the bulls, you really do want to see getting under 1553. But as long as it, this area is still kind of holding as support i feel like uh, that could result in a pullback soon just because it's, it's not going any lower once the vix gets into a consolidation area like this and it's not going any lower sometimes it can result in a pretty huge pop back to the median or the average and that's going to be your you know 2022 to 2023 average close which is currently at 24 01 you probably just round it down to 24 even so eventually it's gonna come back up for a mean progression you might just need a little bit more of a surprise factor in terms of economic data and in terms of just the market in general we have no surprise factor everything's already been kind of felt priced in and the market's been a little bit slow the only thing we've kind of been running off is like ai hype also relief from debt ceiling talks so that'll be another factor also so we're definitely gonna be looking for for the for the debt ceiling looking for more negotiations if it seems like there's not any negotiations you might still see a little bit of you know resistance in the market and chop but you can see once they sounded confident in their negotiations debt ceiling talks market was able to rally a little bit and rally for a couple days on that spy breakout that i showed you so this little breakout here that i showed you earlier this was purely after the debt ceiling negotiations were sounding a little bit more positive and it rallied for two days straight. And we really didn't see any resistance until Friday when Jerome Powell and Ben Bernanke were speaking. And really, we didn't even get that much from Jerome Powell and Ben Bernanke on Friday. I feel like this is majority just from, you know, options expiration. It gets super choppy. There's a lot of money expiring. And I truly feel like algorithms are programmed to pin price so they don't have to pay out as much as 
people would like. That's unfortunate, but it's probably true. Because there's so much money expiring, why would you want the price to move when you could just let a bunch of options expire worthless? Or, you know, if there's big money involved, maybe they're defending their level and keeping price in the money so that they can get their strike price paid. But that's the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, need that signal from the VIX. Do need to see it getting over 1811 with a close. It'll take it to 20. Otherwise, you're looking for a close over 20 on the higher time frames. And that's going to be a good you know, bear signal to start looking at shorts again. 20 has always been the psychological level. Otherwise, you're gonna wanna see it get under 1553. If it gets under 1553, they could take the market a little bit higher, but you can see it's kind of just in a cuck zone. So that's pretty much all I got for you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Hopefully we have a good trading week this week and some of these shorts will pay this week, for hopefully for longer than a day, because last week, only Monday and Tuesday, our short setups actually kind of worked. So hopefully we can get a pullback in the market. I'd like to see one, just because we're looking a little frothy. Like you saw the QQQ, it did close over resistance, so looking a little bit bullish, but it will need to get back under 334, and then SPY, you know, kind of just at an inflection point, kind of at a resistance, it will need to get over 420. So make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. I'm going to get this chopped up, edited, and sent out, and I'm out.